Hey, this is just too easy. We have Tammy Holland over here. Body shape goes out like a peplum top. Got the very delicate wrist, have a lack of brow ridge, um, no Adam's apple, um, smaller skull. And then in comparison to Mandea, it's very, very obvious that this, this individual has male skeletal markers and this has female skeletal. They all worship Baphomet, which is a transgender god that they have. This is their religion. Study these markers so that you aren't deceived. Hello everyone, once again from the authoritarian monarchy of the United Kingdom. And also, happy Zelda day. I hope all of my subscribers appreciate. I literally have the game sitting right in front of me. And it's like 10pm. And I'm not going to play it today. I'm going to be editing this lovely video for you guys. So already like the video because I'm forsaking Zelda for this video. And also because... Not only am I forsaking playing a great 10 out of 10 new game to make this video, we are diving into something truly unhinged. And I've seen a lot of people covering this lately, but I kind of want to tie it back into other themes about racism. And that is trans investigators or trans investigators. People who make videos, who make TikToks, speculating that famous people are actually transgender and it is absolutely bizarre and it seems like some new type of phrenology and on that note a lot of it is also really really racist because they're speculating that a lot of famous black women are actually trans women basically based on racism and of course these people are transphobes so they're not saying these people are trans women and they should gender them correctly they're also saying no they're trans women that means they are men and if you've been following like the gutter of American conservative politics, like how many people have said over the years Michelle Obama is a man, and this is actually a long history of racism of basically saying that black women in America are actually men. Now, this also plays into like the Western gender binary and how we actually view gender in the West, and you really cannot divorce that from racism in that feminine beauty standards in the UK and the US have traditionally idealized white women and all the people in like beauty magazines or set in trends or people just held up as like the height of femininity have been historically white women where people from different backgrounds are obviously demonized in comparison to that and it happens to everyone as well for example how society views black men in contrast to white men how society views Asian men as often effeminate because they do not fit in with this very narrow view of Western masculinity. So I do want to touch on this racism stuff. I also want to focus on just like the sheer insanity of this because it's not even people saying like, oh, that woman who looks masculine is actually a man. It's literally like every single person is transgender. JK Rowling is transgender despite being like a massive crusader against transgender rights and i'm going to show you some youtube channels because seriously it's some absolutely unhinged shit it is the most fringe stuff you have ever seen it really goes beyond the traditional transphobia we've been seeing it like takes it to another level so it's basically viewing the world for an extreme version of the western gender binary sprinkle in some phrenology and racism and sprinkle in some absolute insane pseudoscience and that's what you get with trans investigators. So we're gonna cover all of this today. Again, please like the video for me sitting out on playing Tears of the United Kingdom tonight. Also in the comments, let me know what is the most crazy stuff you've seen in regards to trans investigators. Also follow me on social media, at the Cavernacle on Twitter, but also on Instagram. Instagram is a better place to engage with me, but it's also where I've posted about my travels recently around Southeast Asia and all of that is archived in my highlight reels on my profile page. If you care about any of that, go check it out. Also consider becoming a patron. I'm trying to build up as many $1 to $3 patrons as possible and the benefits include exclusive content from my travels and there will be more videos from that as well. My podcast is launching on Saturday or Sunday and half of that will be exclusive to the Patreon page and you also get access to my Discord server and my Nintendo Switch friend code. So if you care about any of that stuff, consider becoming a patron and also check out my subreddit and check out my second channel where the public podcast will go live. All of that stuff down in the description. You guys might have seen that viral TikTok of that woman basically saying Tom Holland and Zendaya are both transgender, but I want to save that for a bit later just because that person's page is like 
crazy racist in that it just basically targets black women saying they are all transgender. So I just wanna start with a summary, looking at the craziest stuff I found, including people saying JK Rowling is transgender from Mel Mag, unhinged transvestigators think they're the only cis people left. The community of trans investigators, the self-appointed gender sleuths who claim that pretty much anyone who has ever been photographed is secretly transgender. For them, it's not enough to support transphobic politicians and laws while harassing and dehumanizing any trans person they encounter online or in real life. They also need a steady influx of images and videos revealing the true gender of public figures who transitioned as part of a conspiracy orchestrated by the New World Order. The evidence offered by trans investigators in their detective work falls below even the threshold of junk science, barely worth the time it takes to explain. Suffice to say, they can always interpret some physical feature as a sign that a woman was born a man or vice versa. Most often this rests on the radical oversimplification of the human skeleton. Clavicles, shoulders, hips, the jawline, spine shape, and cue angles are frequently referenced as conclusive indications of male or female anatomy. In practice though, since none of these weirdos have the slightest expertise in the variants of the human body, the proofs are dependent on rudimentary shapes and lines. It's no less ridiculous than masculinity shitpost the Revelinos don't lean in theory of power dynamics in which a man is shown to be submissive if he tilts himself towards a woman in a photograph. I forgot all about that one. Trans investigators love to make the case that the most conventionally masculine and feminine celebrities are not what they seem. If there isn't an obvious bone structure tell, they can resort to gut feelings. This extreme worldview will have you suspicious of literally everyone. Here's a woman who went on Twitter at denouncing her former best friend and co-workers as inverted things, men in disguise as women. So here's me, blonde real woman, and my ex, supposed best friend, maid of honor at my wedding, and a man. She's from the Isle of Man. There's a lot of inverted things there. And I'm not joking. Saying this woman is a man because she's from the Isle of Man, this is probably more logical than most of the reasons they give why women are actually men, apparently. And of course, once you've gone through the entire list of acquaintances, it's time to start taking creep shots of strangers in public. So one tweeted this, Everywhere I go, I see women with no butts, big shoulders and brow ridges, men with big butts, sloping shoulders and pretty eyes. Real men and women seem scarce. Like, imagine how insane you'd have to be to not only take a picture of these two in public, but then draw lines on them talking about how because the man might have a bigger bum than the woman, that means they're both transgender. The internet has just rotted so many people's brains. While transphobia is very, very mainstream in the UK, it's basically embedded in both major political parties in the US. You do have a bit of a better situation with the Democrats, but it's not like they really stand up for the trans community despite not attacking them, where Republicans absolutely hysterical about trans people and they want trans people to stop existing but this is even like more fringe and like those pictures show they just think everyone is trans it's like invasion of the body snatchers or they live but instead of people all being aliens or all being like these weird robot things everyone is actually just transgender apart from the few of you who are in this fringe insane community that is embodied by a lot of cults online isn't it it's like we know the truth we are the true believers and everyone else is either a sheep or everyone else is in on this conspiracy. Like it is they live in real life apparently. So now let's go through what some of the more insane posts I've seen. You're gonna get a sense of like how crazy these people are. There is like no logic. They literally believe everyone is transgender. Here's a post. I hate looking at Amelia Clark's mouth. Amelia's male dental arch is egregious. And then it has a picture of apparently a male arch versus a female uh the person saying i love how they think a person's face is just a skull with cling wrap thick skin over it and not covered in muscle and fat and that male jaws are cartoonishly huge like yeah what even is this so one about Meghan markle he's so rectangular no waste whatsoever and then here's the one about henry cavill in a private transvestigation group facebook is an absolute worst henry cavill's girly eye shows henry cavill's not a guy no matter how much work they get done, they can't change the energy coming out of the eyes, the windows to the soul. I don't know if this specific photo is photoshopped, 
because his eyes do look very piercingly blue, like even more so than usual. But again, I'm not joking. That energy thing is is real. Like that sounds like a parody. That sounds like a parody of what you think a trans investigator would be. But no, to Henry Cavill is transgender because of the energy coming out of the eyes, the feminine energy. And Henry Cavill is someone who fits in with the traditional Western view of masculinity, but apparently has feminine energy coming out of his eyes. So Henry Cavill is not a man. But then, like I said, again, people who fit into the traditional stereotypical Western view of femininity, people on the same Facebook thing are saying men for Margot Robbie, Natalie Portman. But this is, of course, really, really ironic. I would say there's a pipeline from being like a gender critical feminist or just a conservative transphobe and being a trans investigator because I've seen these people in JK Rowling's comments, but don't worry, JK Rowling is not spared from her own trans investigation. So let's start on 4chan where people are posting pictures of her throughout the year saying, turfs are a joke, her face keeps growing more manly and having to go back for more. And then there's another picture of Posey Parker, JK Rowling, and it's saying it's all of them. If they have a platform, they are not what you think. Controlled opposition. Like even these drawings look like they live with male skull over all these women. So more 4chan stuff, transvestigating um, JK Rowling. Obviously 4chan you don't, can't take too seriously, but it's not just the transphobic tweets. It's literally about everything. The way she talks about Harry Potter and tries to retcon everything about the books on Twitter like 15 years after the last book came out, like Dumbledore being gay. The way she writes her books, her essay about the BBC, a big part of which doesn't focus on trans women, but trans men and her obsession with trans people. The fact that she's writing a new series of books under a male name, which I haven't read, but from what I heard has some juicy female to male rapper type vibes. Honestly, don't even like her books, but she's so fascinating to me. I don't follow her much on social media, but whenever I do hear something about her, I'm always thrown into a JK Rowling browsing fest for like a day or two, seeing what she's been up to. But you cannot convince me this is a cishet woman. I refuse to believe it. Another one. Predators are coming to a lady's toilet near you or as a teacher in school. You think this woman is a predator. It's a man, this person says. Another account saying, JK Rowling and his wife join the list. Popular book authors are not allowed to write their own books. Music band members are not allowed to compose their own music. Film directors are not allowed to write their own scripts or films. I was thinking this. None of them are quite as talented as we are led to believe. And of course, you see the picture with the skull on and the triangle around their nose. So there's another one investigating Matt Walsh as well. So these people are turning on all the prominent transphobes um, and even investigating Hassan. There was a video of Hassan walking the other day Someone saying, Hassan walks like Donald Duck. And someone else saying, those are some awfully wide set hips for a man. So speaking of JK Rowling still, I stumbled across these absolutely insane like stills, which basically contain a load of photos of usually women saying they're actually transgender or, you know, like I said, saying they're men. So JK Rowling is a man. And this looks like so crazy. I thought it must have been a parody. But at the bottom, it had Sovereign Source Studios. I was curious, and I typed in this into YouTube, and it has 7.5 thousand subscribers and has numerous videos on just saying female celebrities are actually men. But anyway, I'm not going to play the video because I bet this type of unhinged person is probably going to strike my channel if I do. But don't worry, I don't even need to play the video. Basically, there is no talking. This person does not talk. It's silent. It's just a PowerPoint. A PowerPoint of comparing different photos of women at different ages and saying, no, they were actually men, but they might have gone through like some sort of surgery and now they look more feminine and they've just been pretending to be cishet women their entire life. Then I got some pictures, don't worry, of some of the stills you'll be seeing because they also post on Twitter. So here's a video they made. And this is really funny about Angelina Jolie. And look at what they're using for it. They're using Angelina Jolie playing a man when she's like an undercover spy in I think the movie Salt. And they're using that as evidence that Angelina Jolie is actually a man. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Angelina Jolie did look like a man when she was playing a spy who dressed up as a man in a movie. You're totally right. But yeah, if you just keep looking, Halle Berry is a man and you got all these insane pictures like 
what even software is this person using? It looks like, again, 2008 Facebook or something. Madonna is a man. Amelia Earhart was male. So as you've seen there, the trans investigators and this cult are just, you know, completely out of touch with reality. It really is just like every other insane cultish thing you've read. I would obviously just describe a lot of this based on vibes because like I was saying at the start, a lot of the racism comes into play when it targets black women, but when they're just targeting everyone, like it is just based on vibes. Like what is the basis for claiming any of this? They're just making stuff up, just saying Hassan is a female, JK Rowling is actually a man or whatever. But now I wanna get into the actual racism and link it to a point that is really serious. And that is historically black women being racially abused by white people calling them men. And this is where I wanna talk about the Tom Holland and Zendaya thing. So there's a person on Instagram called Queen Awake. And I recommend everyone go on this page. And like I said, this person just believes every single crazy ass conspiracy theory. Often I believe people are products of their environment. And then you just have people like this whose brain has just been melted into becoming some super racist bigot. Holly Weird Exposer teaching critical thinkers how to identify inverted celebrities top 1%. Now, you guys would have probably seen this because it was going viral. So I want to start with the Zendaya and Tom Holland one. And obviously, I think this is racially motivated in part in targeting Zendaya. Um, but then I want to actually focus on how she basically just targets black women saying they are actually men or trans women. So let's look at the Zendaya one first. Today's episode of celebrities that you didn't know were actually the opposite gender. We're gonna be covering Mandaya, AKA Zendaya. Let's just get right into it. By now, if you've been following my page for a minute, you know male skeletal markers. Skeletal marker number one, the straight across clavicle. We've got the brow ridge. We've got the deep socketed eyes. We've got the wide dental arch. We've got the can opener jaw. We've got the thick neck. Uh, we've got the shaped like a V. We've got these really, really, really long arms and really big hands. These are just a few of the opposite gender markers. There are others to confirm, but when in doubt, look at the significant other or the spouse. Hey, this is just too easy. We have Tammy Holland over here. Body shape goes out like a peplum top. Got the very delicate wrist, have a lack of brow ridge, um, no Adam's apple, um, smaller skull. And then in comparison to Mandaya, it's very, very obvious that this this individual has male skeletal markers and this has female skeletal. They all worship Baphomet, which is a transgender god that they have. This is their religion. Study these markers so that you aren't deceived. So if you wanted any confirmation that this person is crazy, talking about they all worship Baphomet, basically it's just like any other conspiracy theory from the last, I don't know, five or six years. I just can't wait until this is actually linked to um, Jews doing this because we all know that is coming next. Actually, if you think about like cultural Marxism and all the conspiracy theories that spawns, I'm guessing this is actually linked in somehow. But yeah, Tammy, Tammy Holland could maybe see this as kind of linked to all the other crazy stuff I've shown you. Maybe it's not explicitly racist, but I still think this is a racist one as well. She's basically saying, well, look, look at both of them together. The black woman is very masculine and the white dude is very feminine by comparison, when they stand next to each other. A view of gender in a racist term and just a heavy dose of Republican conspiracy theories. But don't worry, if you're getting the inkling that this person is very racist, now let's look at her basically saying Naomi Campbell is actually a man. And you tell me if this sounds like race science. There's a difference in a masculine looking female and somebody who has male skeletal markers. Let me show you what I mean. This is supermodel Naomi Campbell. This face has all male skeletal markers. Brow ridge, deep socketed eyes, can opener jaw, wide dental arch. But remember, you have to confirm with body. So let's go check out the body. Now, this is all confirmed with male skeletal structure in the body as well. Okay, we're shaped like an upside down triangle. We have the shoulders wider than the hips. Uh, there's a little bulge too, if you see that. We also have a straight across clavicle. We have longer limbs. We have really big hands. Um, 
we have the Adonis belt. Let me show you the skeletal markers on an openly trans person and you can compare the similarities that they have in bone structure. The same skeletal markers that I just named off with Naomi Campbell, um, this person has and they are openly trans. Here is a side-by-side -side picture. As you can see, they both have straight across clavicles. They both have the same facial structure. They have um, shoulders that are wider than their hips. They're shaped like upside down triangles. Like they legit both have male skeletal markers. The only difference is this one is openly trans and this one isn't. You cannot be born a biological female and have 20 of the opposite skeletal markers. Stay wide awake. Like this is legit some form of like skull measuring phrenology, isn't it? Like it's insanely racist, insanely racist. And of course, pseudoscience, skeletal markers, skeletal markers isn't a thing. And nothing she said about Naomi Campbell is exclusive to either sex, right? Like, none of those traits she's talking about there. It is literally just some sort of weird phrenology. And like I said, historically, this has been a thing that has targeted black women because black women aren't seen to fit in with the traditional gender roles of Western society and the traditional beauty standards of Western society. And the thing is, you might be asking, like, why don't I go and, like, just debunk all of this? But I don't even think this even needs debunking to most people. Does this need debunking that everything she's saying is completely based on her own observation? Don't worry, actually. She tells us how she comes to this conclusion. How did she become such an expert in finding out who was transgender in society, secretly transgender? Let's listen to her speak. Learning skeletal markers can be kind of tricky at first. So I'm gonna let you know some things that I did to get really good at this. The first thing that I did was go to Bright Green Barbie and study what skeletal markers looked like. I went and studied openly trans people on their social media platforms and compared skeletal markers to that so that I could like train my eye to what it looks like when you are the opposite gender. I went and looked at just like regular people out in town. Then I went and looked at celebrities and what I knew about skeletal markers and what I knew about trans skeletal markers and what I knew about normal people. I went and I looked at these celebrities and they all had the opposite markers. I also knew that their god was transgender. I also knew that Satan was a master deceiver. And I also know that God says to be fruitful and multiply. So how she learned to spot transgender people was stalking transgender people on Instagram and just staring at people in public and also just, oh yeah, I made it up. That is actually the baseline for her science. How she spots secret transgender people, just vibes. It all just is vibes. It's if I'm insane and I'm a transphobe, and vibes. If I think you're Tammy Holland, or if I think you're Mandea, then I'm just gonna start telling everyone you're secretly transgender based on pseudoscience, basically skull measuring. But there is a serious side to this, and it's actually what I've been seeing a lot with these types who are transvestigators, and this is just historically a thing as well, that they often target black women. And I found two really good articles about this. This goes back to Michelle Obama, who's probably the most visible example of this in the public eye and that how many conservatives have said Michelle Obama is a man. Alex Jones, of course, constantly said this, but let's get into this article from 2020. So right wingers are spreading rumors that Michelle Obama is trans again, and it all stems back to this failed Republican congressional candidate. These rumors have re-emerged on Twitter thanks in part to failed Republican congressional hopeful Deanna Lorraine. Michelle Obama is releasing a documentary on Netflix called Becoming, Lorraine tweeted. I wonder what she's becoming. As right-wing Twitter echoed the conspiracy, Lorraine doubled down on her bigotry while commenting on the basis of speculation Joe Biden is considering her as his VP pick. I honestly wonder if Michelle Obama has the balls to face the scrutiny that she would come under if she signed on to be Biden's VP. The false claim that Michelle Obama is trans is one that resurfaces every so often, usually pushed by bigots who want to shame the former first lady, wrongly implying that being transgender is something to be ashamed of. As often cited conspiracy theories suggest, comedian Joan Rivers was aware of Obama's purported gender identity and was actually killed as part of a cover-up. Lorraine has referenced this theory on Twitter, writing... Joan Rivers knew. A conspiracy video titled Michelle Obama is a transgender man is often cited by online bigots. Aside from the incorrect terminology, it tries to suggest Obama is a trans woman, not a trans man, and blatant transphobia. The video relies on a number of racist stereotypes about black women's bodies, suggesting that those with builds like Obama's are 
masculine. A similar video was shared in January by far-right conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, who used clips of Barack Obama saying the name Michael as alleged proof. So back in 2018, Hannah Echo wrote a really good article for BuzzFeed News, um, and it's, as a black woman, I'm tired of having to prove my womanhood. And I think this is a really good article about someone's personal experience of this, while also tying it in to some historical stuff as well. So I was 21, standing in a brightly lit 7-Eleven. I was so surprised by the casual way this person had decided to interrogate my gender that I accidentally blurted out male and then realizing my mistake said, no, no, I mean female. My face burned as I carried the ice cold drinks to the counter. The stranger grinned at me as if we were sharing something intimate. Dude, he said, putting on his Ray-Bans, you said male first. I got back into my car in silence. My sister repeatedly asked me what was wrong, so I told her, adding a laugh to assure her that I was okay. But seconds later, as I reversed out of the parking lot, I crashed into the passenger side door of a coloured sedan. Everyone involved was unhurt, but both cars became crumpled metal at the point of impact. For over a decade, I've had experiences like these. Public instances where I've been mistaken for a man. And while each incident hasn't resulted in a car crash, I'm always left disoriented, wondering which fragment of my identity was responsible for the misdirected sir, the muffled joke. On some days, I decide it's the automatic way most people associate tallness with maleness. Other times, I wonder whether it's my deep voice, an androgynous outfit, or a short haircut that provoke the reaction. But I've always been well aware that my race and gender play a huge part in these misconceptions. I have lived long enough in the world to notice that black women are rarely allowed full access to their femininity. It was no accident that a random white dude in a 7-Eleven thought it was perfectly okay to ask me if I was a woman. Black women are constantly perceived as having attributes often assigned to masculinity. We are read as strong, indestructible, invulnerable to pain. Obviously, really racist medical belief that black people feel less pain. There's a lot of medical racism still in America. A 2014 OKCupid study of the dating habits of its users revealed that 82% of non-black men had a bias against black women. Serena Williams has been likened to a man alongside her older sister Venus. Her impressive, beautiful body scrutinized for most of her career. Leslie Jones was subjected to outrageous racist and sexist trolling before the Ghostbusters premiere. A West Virginia official considers it perfectly fine to call Michelle Obama an ape in heels. Blackness, especially when attached to a black woman's body, is overwhelmingly gendered masculine. When antebellum middle-class white women were angels of the house, beautiful, pious, chaste and delicate, black women were thought to be the beasts in the fields who did not need their bodies, sensibilities and virtue protected. While the 19th century slavery-based American economy depended on this distinction, the bestial view remained long after black bondage passed. The tenets of white femininity failed to stand on their own unless we are constantly reminded of their shadow, the strong, masculine black woman. So I like that last little part about how white femininity exists in a racist system. It relies on othering other groups of women. And often that is your proximity to whiteness. And in the racial hierarchies we've created for ourselves in racist countries, black people are always the most othered. So they aren't accepted into Western femininity where sometimes you do get other groups actually accepted to some degree. What has happened to black women is that because they fulfilled a role during the slavery period of working the fields and they were in complete contrast, white females who were part of slave owning families, that stigma has still existed in our current understanding of, I guess, femininity as a whole. And in that way, you can also really tie it back to patriarchy as well. Because black women fulfilled a role in slavery that was seen as more masculine, along with the color of their skin, that has led them to be ostracized from what American femininity actually is. And that is like the historical basis for why so many of these trans investigators are targeting black women and saying they're men because historically they haven't fit in to traditional Western white femininity. And that's why you see so much stuff about Michelle Obama as well, because what they view as a woman is exclusive. And in that exclusivity, they don't really consider black women as equal to white women in both their race, of course, because they are racist too, but also in their femininity. So that woman I showed you, that TikToker, is so insane. It's probably so subconscious, the racism of her actually targeting 
black women. But like I said, it's very, very common by many conservatives, not even trans investigators, to say this stuff about black women, that they're actually men. They're actually really, really masculine. That could be a man. But again, it is related in American history and American racism. But it's also kind of the next step of the transphobe movement because the transphobe movement in America specifically is extremely conservative, often led by people who don't believe in facts, do not believe in science, often are very, very religious, might even believe the world is 5,000 years old. And when you're already thinking like that, and you're thinking all these crazy things about trans people, and also you're extremely scared of trans people as well, I don't think it is out of the realms of possibility that the transphobe cult might start becoming more like trans investigators in how absolutely untethered from reality they are. Like, think of American Republicanism right now. Think of the American Republican Party, right? Think of, like, Mitt Romney compared to, like, Donald Trump. And, like, think of how it just moved and moved and moved. Not just moved more to the right, but more in terms of being completely untethered and detached from any reality. And that is something that could easily happen to the transphobe movement and even the gender critical feminist movement in the UK as well. But anyway, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.